My name is Stefan Deschain, and I'm the host of The Nature's Living Show. And my name is Samantha Graham, and I'm the podcast's producer. This is the YouTube version of the podcast. We make it available here for those who prefer this format. But podcasts are much more convenient when you subscribe and listen on a podcast app. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Stitcher, Deezer, Overcast, and many, many other places. Please visit naturistlivingshow.com for more information. But for now, enjoy this YouTube version of our podcast. On this episode of The Naturist Living Show, Body Painting. This episode of The Naturist Living Show is brought to you by Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. At Bear Oaks, we offer traditional naturist values in a modern setting. Free your body, free your mind. www.bearoaks.ca Welcome, dear listener, to episode 68 of The Naturist Living Show. My name is Stéphane Deschain, and I'm your host for this episode of The Naturist Living Show, and I'm also the owner of Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. The survey that I mentioned uh, a few episodes ago that was uh, done by Bear Oaks and the Federation of Canadian Naturists and the Fédération Québécoise de Naturisme has officially been released. It was released in June, and we did a press release, and of course there'll be a link to that in the show notes, and it has fantastic numbers. I mean, it suggests, well, it suggests that 14% of Canadians uh, have some interest in going to a nude beach or a naturist resort or park or something like that. 14%. Now, even if we're conservative and we take just that 8 9%, uh, which have said they would go to a resort. That's the market that I'm in as the owner of Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. Um, that's still about half a million people in the Toronto area. If I got 1% of those people, I would have a huge problem with parking and space and everything else. So it's it's, a, it's an increase over the 1999 survey. It shows more interest. There's more details. Uh, we talk about other uh, aspects of uh, attitudes toward nudity, in terms of going skinny dipping, in terms of sleeping nude, instead of wa- in terms of walking around your house nude, um, and almost two thirds of Canadians have done something like that. Have walked around nude or slept nude or something like that. So it's very interesting. Um, it shows that young people are. Uh, uh, not more likely to have done it than the rest of Canadians. Um, and to a certain extent, that's not entirely surprising. If they're younger, they've had less time to do these things. But they are more likely to try. So yet again, um, there's no lack of interest by young people in naturism. And uh, we did a press release, of course. Uh, and there was a, there was some pickup, not as much as I expected. I guess the world is flooded with polls, and people aren't as interested in them anymore. But uh, there was some pickup, and there was some interest. Uh, one of them was by the QMI, uh, which is a Quebec or um, uh, wire service, and they did a, uh, a, uh, they did a an article which they interviewed me for and there was some radio as well but the QMI one is a neat one because there was a uh, they turned it into a graph a very neat cartoon graph and I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well as well as a few of the articles for you to uh, look at if you're interested and speaking of uh, youth being interested in naturism two articles have just come out recently Uh, one was in uh, Simon Fraser University uh, so that's a university on the west coast of Canada in British Columbia for those folks who are n- listening who are not from Canada. Um, and uh, th- this woman wrote an article about her love for wreck beach and naturism and nudity. And totally, I had absolutely nothing to do with that article. 
Uh, but it's a lovely article, and I'll put a link to the in the show notes as well. And then at this, just shortly after that, an article came out um, from Wilfrid Laurier University's newspaper, and uh, also about naturism, and by a young woman who was who just loves the idea of naturism and likes to be clothes free whenever she gets a chance. And uh, I didn't seek her out. She sought me out, and I was interviewed for it as well. But here's two examples, again, of young people being very interested and passionate about a movement, even if they don't fully understand it yet, and they're still trying to get into it and learn about it. So, again, it's this crazy story that there's no interest in naturism. The survey confirms it. We get lots of young people at Bear Oaks all the time. Um, are you tired of hearing me say this yet? Because that's all I keep seeing, because I'm so tired of still hearing people saying, oh, yeah, well, the aging and graying and sagging of naturism um, just happened in another interview that I did related to the survey. This myth has got to be broken enough already. <laughs> You've heard Joshua before on this show, and he's done some interviews for me, which I very much appreciate because it saves me having to do some of the interviewing and saves me some time. And for this show, he did an interview with Andy Golub, um, and who is a body painter artist. And, uh, well, let's just get right into that. It's great to be back on The Nature's Living Show. I'm Joshua Williams, and my guest today is Andy Golub an artist who uses a rather unique canvas, the nude human body. In addition, most of Andy's work is done in the public sphere, meaning that his painting takes place in front of a live audience. We'll talk a little bit about how he got into painting the nude body, as well as how he connected with the naturist world. All right, well, it's great to have you uh, on today. And uh, as, a, as a way to start, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background, uh, both personal and as an artist? My name is Andy Golub. I'm a New York artist. I do, uh, I, I sort of have a way of looking at art where anything can be art and, any, and art can be anywhere. And I do a lot of, I, I basically paint on anything from murals to canvases to cars to people. And uh, I've sort of kind of made a little bit of a name for myself here in New York by doing a lot of live body painting in the streets of New York City, uh, mostly in Times Square, but everywhere. Personal, I mean, uh, I guess I'm a family man. Uh, I live just uh, just north of Manhattan with my wife and two kids. Great. And I, definitely we're going to get into a lot of conversation, rather, about how you use the body as a canvas, because I think that's of, of particular interest to us. So why don't we why don't we go there now? Uh, how did you end up using the body as a canvas, and what was that sort of process going from, you know, a traditional canvas or traditional, if you could call it traditional art, um, you know, to to a body? Well, you know, it's funny. I mean, I, I at some point I started. I mean, I can get into more details, but I mean, at some point I started painting on objects, and I was painting on really everything I can get my hands on. One of the ones that was really cool was I started painting on rocks. And and, I, and when I painted on objects, I always saw it as a collaborative project, even though the the object is not doing anything. But what I would do is I would, I would um, look at the shape and the form of the rock and then um, sort of interact with it, where sometimes I would just allow those forms to guide my art. And then sometimes I would, I guess, allow my own ideas about what the art should look like to kind of uh, be the thing that determined what the painting would be. And then after painting on many different objects, uh, I I decided I wanted to paint on people. And then when I started painting on people, I noticed that there was this whole other dynamic, and that's, of course, that the person is not just form, but that inside uh, there's a soul, and that that ended up becoming uh, an even greater uh, source of, of artistic inspiration. But besides that, it really was almost like this completely new experience that really was like no other because we would, uh, me and the model or models would sort of get to know each other in a, just a very, I don't know, very unusual way, a very, I I would call it a right brain way uh, is what I would say. Right. So I wouldn't characterize you as sort of a traditional body painter in the sense that, you know, what you'd find at a carnival or, or, you know, at a fair. 
Can you talk a little bit about how you approach body painting? Uh, I mean, it really is like you're doing art on the body. And of course, there's a connection between you and the model, as you said. But how is it, how is it different than maybe what somebody would normally think of as a, you know, as body painting? Well, I mean, I appreciate, I, I actually, I do appreciate the question. And, and, and I think that my body painting really is very different than almost everything that's out there. And I think that uh, in, in body painting, and I, and I think that because of that, it's very often misinterpreted or maybe people sort of when they see it, they understand it, but they're not really sure how to categorize it. So then I end up getting categorized with other body painters. And what you're saying is true that a lot of people, whether it's a baseball game or a football game, rather, you know, where people are painted up or, you know, or a carnival. But I think that there's also like a, a whole... A genre of really talented body painters with a lot of skills that, that create very beautiful things. And my work is just as different from them as it is from the person at the carnival because what, what they do, I mean, what I would say that one of the things that distinguishes what I do, as I was saying earlier, is that by interacting with the actual person, the art is not decided upon in any way, you know, other than the fact that I'm actually going to paint on the person. It's not decided upon until the actual moment that I'm painting. Right. It relies on that person's energy. And I've had body paintings where I'll, I'll go through my bag and I'll pull out all of my colors and I'll take all the caps off and I'll have like 15 colors of paint. And then once I start painting the person, I only use like two colors. And, and what's really, what's really neat is that sometimes I'll meet a person and, and I'll feel like I'll say, boy, this person's a really cheerful, happy person. And if I just was to have a little conversation with them and walk away, I would totally 100% be under the impression that they were just this type of person. And then when I start painting them immediately, somehow I'm getting some other signals, some other vibe that sort of tells me something different about that person. And I, and I always trust the intuitive side of things and the artistic side of things. So it doesn't really matter really what I think of the person, but it's very easy for me to look at the artwork that I create, you know, after I paint it and to be able to really, you know, it's almost like, um, like interpreting your dreams or, or just interpreting your own artwork and you see things in it that make you sort of feel like you can kind of uh, navigate through it and figure out what it's about. Right. And I understand when you first started with uh, working on a nude body that uh, it was really sort of within a studio setting. And then that has has gone from that to the streets, as you mentioned earlier. Can you talk about how and why you went, you know, took this what's traditionally sort of a, a you know, an experience between the model and the artist and you took it out into the streets where, of course, more people are participating uh, indirectly in the actual art itself. Yeah, thanks. That's a good question too. I, I, I would just say that you know one of the things that I'm I'm really happy about with the way my art has sort of worked out is that it's really sort of just keeps developing and keeps changing and just keeps being new. So where it started off, where I was drawing when I was a kid, and I was drawing in a pad, and then that led to doing canvases, to doing large on wood. To, to painting on wood, to painting on objects, to painting on people, and then to eventually painting on people outside. It's sort of kind of really cool that, you know, the way it just kind of keeps changing. When I was in the studio and I was painting um, a model and I was watching this model walk around fully painted and it was just amazing to me the transformation that she made. And when I looked at the photographs, I really saw how it didn't really it didn't capture, not only didn't capture the whole three-dimensional uh, aspect of it, but it didn't capture the, the, the spiritual transformation. You know, the, the whole energy of the person was sort of embodied in the art and the process of making it. And so I started doing a lot of videotaping with it. And then just one day, all of a sudden, it popped into my mind. I said, I want to share, I want to share this, this very unusual process with the public. And I did it, and I did it in a couple of areas. And we, you know, sometimes, you know, the cops would come over and they would, you know, I guess like not want me to be there or they question me and stuff. And then one time it was in Times Square when Times Square first turned into a pedestrian mall. And I saw the photos in the New York Post on, on, of all these people. It was actually the New York Times 
of people lounging out in Times Square. And I was like, this is where I want to paint. And so I, I go out there and I started uh, to paint there. And very quickly, the cops were very aggressive and trying to scare me away. And at this point, were the, the models fully nude or were they just topless or... This was like, I was painting a guy and a girl and they were both like wearing like G-strings. Okay. As soon as they took the G-strings off, then like the cops came and they were playing this whole game like he's like trying to, oh, now this other guy is going to come and you should be scared. And we had a conversation for about, I don't know, believe it or not, we, we talked for over half an hour and I kind of knew, you know, that they had nothing on me because if they had something on me, the cops are not going to talk to me for half an hour. They're going to say, you leave, I'm going to count to three, or you're going to get arrested. But uh, I, I also, at the same time, I felt like I really didn't know what would happen if I said I refused to stop. And so I let them basically kick me out of Times Square. And were you aware of the uh, any rules or laws related to, to public nudity at that point? Is that something that was part of your plan, or you just sort of went, jumped right into it, uh, not really knowing what the uh, end result would be. I I was I'm always definitely pretty careful not to break the law, and uh, for obvious reasons. And I knew that toplessness was legal, and so I wasn't doing full nude at that point. And when I after I got kicked out of Times Square, I went home and I put a phone call into Ron Kuby, who's a very well known New York City civil rights attorney. And he returned my phone call. He he explained the law very clearly. And he wrote a letter to the city on my behalf, basically saying in today's tough economic times, it would be a shame to have to basically lose a lot of money from a lawsuit for a false arrest. He also said in the letter that full nudity is legal, even though I wasn't doing full nudity at this case. So I felt like in the back of my mind, I always knew that Full nudity was something that was also an option, and at that point, I really hadn't considered it. Well, so now, is full nudity an option because it's connected to art, or can you define that? It's not that you can walk around New York City fully nude, is it, or, or does it have to be related to, to an art? I mean, the, the quick way of saying it is that if it's an art project, full nudity is legal in public. Mm -hmm. The longer version is that if it's part of a display or a exhibition, then, you know, that's the, the official language. Okay. We'll go back to that a little later, because I know that that's happened over time. But take us, so once you found out that it was okay to do that, did you, what was the next step? Did you start doing more, and did you keep getting pushback from uh, the police? Or, you know, walk us through how that happened afterwards. Well, it was funny. I mean, it was it was like I, I made it clear to the to, to the police when I was being kicked out that I was going to come back. And when Ron Kuby wrote a letter to the city, he informed them that I was going to be coming back. And it sort of like made Times Square like a little bit of a like a home for me. Um, it was sort of like almost by them telling me I can't be there made me want to be there more. And I wasn't doing full nudity for a while. I mean, I, I can't really say it's probably a year or two before I started doing full nude and I don't know, it, again, I think it's really just like a natural progression. I think at first the idea of full nudity seemed like too extreme or that maybe people wouldn't be able to control themselves or, you know, that I wouldn't be able to control the reactions. And then just like after doing it enough times and kind of getting used to it and in my own mind, I just was like ready to do it. And what was that for you? I mean, you mentioned, you, you say in there that you weren't quite ready or sure what the reaction would be or whether people could control themselves. What do you mean by that? Is it just the, the sexual connotation to nudity or? Well, I think that, you know, like if all of a sudden some guy starts, you know, getting in the girl's space, then I I'm not really sure exactly how it's all going to play out. And well, I, you know, I, I didn't know you at this point, but uh, once I was walking through Times Square and saw a huge crowd there and, of course, wanted to see what was going on and uh, saw you there uh, painting. So, I mean, I'm assuming that this is a fairly normal thing. If you have two, two or three or however many naked people in the middle of Times Square that you're getting quite an audience. It is. I mean, the, the, when you saw me, it, there's a few interesting stories about it, that. I mean, I can go in a couple directions, but I'll say that the first thing is, is that I mean, well, I'm not going to, I'll let, I'll let you ask about the arrests in its own, in your own way with it. 
but basically, you know, the, to be honest, I mean, there's like when 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 someone's naked, there's like there's a natural amount of space that people give them because they're like a little uncomfortable, and and that's pretty, and that sort of works pretty well. I have like a bunch of photographers that uh, I guess they're paparazzi that sort of kind of follow me around whenever I do stuff, and what they do is because they know me, they kind of. Um, they kind of feel comfortable to break closer than that normal space that other people uh, stay. And then once they break the circle, then everybody else follows in. And so it, it turned out that I had to sort of control those people to make sure that they sort of stayed outside the that circle. You know, maybe it's, I don't know if that's the most interesting story of all of them I tell, but... <laughs> So, so you found though that people kept a little bit of a distance because of the photographers. But I mean, did you have any issues at all with people getting too close or being unseemly or? That I think never that materialized. I, I think that basically, you know, it's what's kind of neat about it is that people see the nudity and they and and sort of like they're on they're always unprepared for what I'm doing, and that's one of the things that's really fun. No matter where I do it, the people around, whether they like it or don't like it, they're they're completely off guard on it. And so people sort of stay back a little ways. They look at it. They try to understand it. There's sometimes that people might react like with a harshness, like someone might say something like salacious. But when they say it, they don't stand there and say it like confronting you. They'll be like, They'll just be walking away, and then as they're like sort of out of the picture, they'll scream something dirty or something like, you know. I've seen one of the, your pictures in one of your books of you know the different reactions of the people around, and it's one of my favorites. But can you describe sort of the different reactions that you get? Obviously, there's one of the things you hear in naturism a lot is that oh, you can't be naked in front of the kids, and obviously there's kids walking through Times Square. You've also got all sorts of different people from different cultures. What, what's been sort of the, the general reaction among these diverse crowds walking through Times Square? It's funny because like mostly people, I would say they look and they just sort of look confused and it's hard to really know, you know, where they're at. And I try not to really get into other people's heads too much. And sometimes there was this one time when this, I've just started painting this girl and this, this older lady comes by and she says, you can't do that. She's like shocked. And then she <laughs> stops and she says, that's disgusting. And me and the model both just sort of looked at her and without, we weren't like happy with it, but we weren't upset about it either. And we both just sort of said at the same time, you know, thank you for sharing. And I, and I think that the idea for me is, is that I don't really know, is this person going to go home and maybe make a change in the way that they see everything. I mean, you know, sometimes the person who's vocal against it is actually on the ver is actually having their own internal battle, and they're on the verge of actually accepting certain ideas, and and they're you're just hearing the part of their resistance to it. I mean, I'm not saying that that's the way it is. What I'm what I'm really saying is is that it's very difficult to really judge people or really understand what what people's sort of battles that they have going on themselves. So I look at it more than anything as an exchange of energy and I'm putting out an energy of freedom, an energy of like of trust between me and the model and, and it's very obvious that there's that trust, an energy of a, a lack of shame. And I think that most people really sense that, really sense the positivity to it and really kind of feel uplifted in that way. The people that feel, let's say, more angry, I think it's sort of like they're they just have their own issues that are that that are they're bringing in that are not specifically, you know, with what I'm doing. But that's obviously a part of art. I mean, that in a way, that's that's saying to me that the art that you're doing is working. That there's there's a connection, whether it's negative or positive. There's something happening. I, I agree. I mean, I, I you know, it's funny because uh, lately I've been painting a lot in the studio. Uh, I've got several paintings in the studio, and I, I love painting in the studio. And I'm like. Oh man, I should just do this, you know. I I love this, and I don't. I, I'm why am I painting outdoors? It's so stressful. But when I do paint outdoors, I I feel like, oh man, this is so much fun. I'm interacting with so many people on so many layers and levels that it's just, I, it's really like no other experience. So I'm I feel to be honest. I mean, I really feel like fortunate to have uh, the any of these experiences. As a stylist on the fashion side, I've, I've done a lot of photo shoots and not everything in New York is a public space. I mean, obviously, if you're in front of someone's building, um, that is part of their space um, and you have to get uh, 
usually uh, you would have to get you know rights to be able to do that. Have you shot outside of Times Square in a in a space that might be less public or that uh, you've had other issues? I mean, first of all, I've probably painted in like 15 different places throughout the city. The library on, on 42nd and 5th. I've been in Washington Square Park a couple times, Tompkins Square Park, Columbus Circle, uh, outside of Columbia University. Uh, I've painted a couple times in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Okay, the question was... Um, in terms of uh, maybe private space or in front of a, uh, you know, a, a corporation, obviously Times Square is uh, part of New York, but... Well, I, yeah, I painted, you know, now I'm painting fully nude people. And last summer I painted two fully nude men right outside of the Apple store. And okay. uh, I got a, a much harsher confrontation than I've gotten before. And it was the, the, the cop, I was sort of thrown off because the cop like grabbed my arm and like, he didn't hurt me or anything, but he, but he pulled me in a way that sort of, you know, sent a message to me. I felt like it was sending a message to me, like, like he's not going to just, play by the rules and and I can't say that he won't but it definitely was like uh you know it definitely shocked me a little bit uh to be handled like that and then the security of the Apple store this guy was walking around with two like huge dogs a a big german shepherd and and a big pit bull so I was feeling definitely feeling intimidated I think that was by design and it, again it really makes me think you know like how much cuz there's so many areas that I've painted in New York City so the question is, you know, how much do I want to just say, you know, how much do I want to just go after what I know is going to cause trouble because I have every right in the world to do it and then end up the whole thing's not about the art as much and it's really about the rights part of it. And how much do I want to say, you know, you know, well, look, I mean, I, I can paint in front of the Guggenheim Museum. There's so many places in front of in the city that I can paint where I'm not really given big conf confrontation. Maybe I should just sort of, you know, be satisfied with that. So it's kind of a the mixing art and activism. And is that something that you think about a lot? Or I mean, do you you feel like you're more on the art side? Or has this become sort of married with with activism? This idea of, uh, you know, you mentioned independence earlier, uh, the ability to, you know, to, to do what you want to do in the public space. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's the questions right on. I think, I don't know, like, I think the thing that drives art, and maybe the thing that drives life is that things sort of um, like an imbalance, like this sort of fluctuation between two things. And I think the idea of expression as as a, a right and also expression as a personal need and, and, the, and the way those two things sort of play off each other is, is really what the whole thing's about. And I think that it's very easy to look at it and say, hey, man, you know, you're able to paint in these places that are really public and everybody sees it. And why do you have to just kind of make it about the fight and 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 I think there's a reasonable point but I think what I was as I was just talking to you the 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 other part of it is that by standing up to what what are the forces you know what are the forces that really will go to almost any means to stop me from painting like it, it's these corporate forces of apple like what is that that shapes the the mentality of the public and if i actually did it in front of the apple store not just did it but like painted for a long time i think that not only does that really impact people in a different way because they expect it in times square but i think knowing the boundaries that i'm breaking really creates a level of freedom in me that makes my art sort of expand and do things artistically that I may not even have ever thought of. I mean, art is all about breaking new ground and breaking boundaries. So it's, it's hard to really see why you should just accept the terms uh, that other people have of what kind of... You might as well just let people tell you what you're supposed to paint, even though that's, it seems very far. It's sort of the whole idea of art is freedom. Right. So now you're not the only one engaged, obviously, in the art. You have a model on the other side. So how how did you go about sort of at the beginning and, and even now in finding um, um, women and men who'd be willing to um, not pose just in the studio, but pose out in Times Square in front of everyone? Well, I guess like, you know, you'd be surprised. A lot of people really want to get, I don't know, to, to, be, to be a part of the art. And uh, I think that it's a, a liberating experience for a lot of people. I think the model experience is very different from the artist experience. I mean, 
you know, I'm always looking at the model as everybody's surrounding me and the model is always looking at everybody looking at her or him. But I mean, it's sort of like they, in, in, in some ways they have, I find uh, I'm sometimes a little jealous of the model's experience, to be honest, you know, or I know that there's, there's an aspect of it that I'm not, you know, that I'm not getting, even though I'm sure that I'm getting my own aspect. I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of people really want to be part of it. It got a tremendous amount of press uh, coverage, largely because of the arrests. And, you know, and then it became, I don't want to say a movement, but it just became like where people just keep kind of, you know, saying they want to be a part of it. And it's, I think it's pretty amazing. And maybe I think it, it even speaks to the times that we live in that people, well, let me say it this way. When I was a kid, getting a girl naked was an achievement. <laughs> And when we're in Times Square, getting a person to be naked, not just for me, but for the entire world, seems to be something that is actually relatively relatively doable. <laughs> right, compared to when you were a teenager. <laughs> so you mentioned a little earlier uh, just some of the legal battles that you've had. Um, and, and if I remember correctly, that did lead to an arrest and, and a stay in, in prison. <laughs> is that correct? Yeah, I was uh, about 25 hours in uh, local New York City jail. It was, I, I knew that I was, everything was going to work out okay because I was very, you know, knew, I knew what I was doing and I, and I was prepared for it. But I, I could tell you that it's, it's um, a significant experience. It was something that when I, when I finally got out, I, I really felt the, the lack of freedom sort of sank into me a little bit. So I really like sort of was like, wow, I'm actually free to go wherever I want. So it's, pretty amazing how quickly it sort of changes your uh your point of view i really did not i did not like being alone i was alone for like 15 hours straight i did not like it and i was happy to hang out with all of these scary characters much preferred to hang out with the scary characters than to be by myself and did the model end up in prison as well or was it just you the two models were arrested uh, at the same time and you know, and there was a point when I was getting fingerprinted that they let me visit their cell and talk to them. And they seemed to make be making jokes and they seemed to be pretty, you know, like having a, a good old time at the at the time I saw it. But I can tell you, you know, just from my own experience and from talking to them, there's a certain anxiety associated with it. And I, I think that it's a real experience. And I think it's definitely there's part of it that's pretty uh, a little scary and a little uncomfortable. So at what point did you connect then with the uh, naturist movement? That's where I first met you was at Rock Lodge. Uh, you had come to, to visit. And what was that experience like? Because obviously up until that point, it was really kind of pushing against the ropes. And then and then all of a sudden there's this group out there that, you know, they're all naked and, they're, and it's, it's, you know, seemingly without an issue. So how, how did you end up connecting with, with the naturist movement and, and sort of how did that change or did it change uh, how you, you know, what you did or the access that you had to different models and so on and so forth? Well, you know, I have to tell you, to, to really tell the story right, I have to say that <clears throat> first um, uh, there was uh, several arrests and uh, then we had to go to court. I had to go to court to uh, get my charges dismissed and they were dismissed. But when they were dismissed, they were dismissed under a condition. And the condition was that I can do full nude body painting but only after the sun goes down. And I was okay. never happy with that condition. It always frustrated me because I, there was, I, I think that bothered me the most, I guess, is that there was, there was absolutely no law that they didn't even attempt to make a law. They, even, they just said, We're make, this is a condition so that the children are less likely to see it. It was like some kind of weird compromise with the law. And I was, I, as I said, I was never comfortable with it. And what happened was the way I met the young naturists was uh, Felicity contacted me and wanted to do an article uh, about what I'm doing. And I explained to her that I had this, this restriction and that I really didn't, you know, sort of like this restriction. But she was sort of like saying, so why are you accepting this restriction? And I was like, the answer is that basically I'm working with a lawyer and, you know, I don't have the kind of, I, I don't, I just don't have like funds around so I can just challenge the city wherever I want. But it definitely, you know, when I spoke to her and the way to her, it was sort of like, clearly that was a fight that was worth fighting for. And, and it, it, it was something that 
I attempted, I did for one summer uh, abide by those restrictions. And I was doing, um, when you saw me, I was painting a group of, of nude models and it was after dark. Or, or basically what happens is, is that they, they can be semi-nude, but they can't drop their underwear until after the sun goes down. So it's like this weird game of waiting until a certain time and then the panties drop. <laughs> Everything about it painted what I was doing in, in a sexual way. And I resented that. And it also sort of just had this whole feeling. It was like it was like they made it so that my work was now body painting after dark. And I felt that it was important to be done during the day. Like that was part of it. It was it was supposed to be during the day when the when the children are out. It wasn't like I'm targeting children, but I don't want to be avoiding anyone because it's not something that is salacious. And and I, I really rejected that. I contacted the New York Civil Liberties Union and one of the people that worked there really liked my art a lot and, you know, appreciated what I was doing. And she decided to make it her case. Um, They went to the city and they challenged that rule. And I I mean, the city seemed so stuck on this uh, nighttime thing. Every time I was painting, they they would, not every time, but like a bunch of times I was painting, they would have someone from the city around and they'd come up to me and they'd be like, You're not going to drop those panties until after dark. You're not, you know, like it was so focused on it. I was like, I don't know what they're going to do because now the New York Civil Liberties Union is basically threatening to sue because there's no legal basis for it. And then I was very surprised when one day all of a sudden they said, okay, you're allowed to do it. And uh, the conditions that I was allowed to do it, which again, there should not, you don't need conditions to do something that's completely legal. But the conditions that they gave and I accepted those conditions were that I tell them of the time and place that I do it, that when people take their panties off or their bottoms off, that I put paint on that area right away and that I don't wait a long time. And the third one is that I don't paint directly in front of the Toys uh, Toys R Us store in Times Square, which is sort of (laughs) ironic because the Toys R Us store in Times Square is one spot in a giant city, um, but one particular cop who... I think was probably a big part of this whole thing going down and the arrests and everything. He saw me in front of Times Square and then he got mad. And I think that's probably where a lot of the trouble started. So he was like, all right, you can do it, but you can't do it in Times Square. Like somehow he's saving face. But of course I can do it in front of the M&M store. I mean, you know, it's like the same people that are in front of one place. Right. And of course, this is all under the guise of saving the children, and the children, of course, don't have an issue with it, for the most part, unless their parents do. I think that, and and, and it's funny because, you know, I, I look at videos and I look at photos, and there's definitely times where I will see the, uh, the full range of reactions, and, you know, and, and I will see sometimes children shocked. And, you know, and, and sometimes I'll see a kid, and, I, and, I'll, and, I, and the kid seems like just cool with it, and they're just looking at it, you know, and I'm like, see... The kids are cool with it. It's no problem. And then I'll see a photo or a video of a kid and he's like shocked. And then I'm like, oh, well, I guess that's you know not true for everyone. But I guess really more than anything, I have faith that the idea of the body or the being exposed to the human body is um, not harmful, psychologically harmful. And I'm willing to sort of take that burden on myself, moral burden on myself to do what I do. I mean, the reality is it's legal. And when people come to me and they say they think it's wrong, I say, I respect your opinion. I disagree. I don't think it's wrong, but I'm not the person you should really be talking to. You should be talking to the legislature, le- legislators, because if you want to talk about whether or not it's okay for people to see the nude form and the nude body, I'm happy to talk to you all day long. That's not a problem to me. But I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing because you don't like it. Right. So obviously you got together with a YNA and and you came to Rock Lodge. How was that experience in comparison? Obviously it's a whole different situation. But for you, um, having you know walking into a place where there was naked people everywhere. And you were probably the only clothed one when you walked in. Well, you know, it's funny. I mean, you know, first of all, I mean, so I painted a group of, of the, the naturists and it was nighttime and, and it was like a little like uh, it wasn't the vibe that I really liked and all this. And then, you know, they invited me. And, and I'll tell you something. Was, the crowds were enormous, like surrounded by hundreds of people and definitely some characters that were a little like I really wasn't the most comfortable with. I, I really had a lot of respect for the, the naturists because, 
you know, they're used to being naked, but they're not used to being naked in the general public. And they really kind of got a taste of my world. And, and I really, I thought it was really, you know, I don't know if the word's the right word's brave, but there was, there was something that they were really, you know, putting into it that they would trust me and the art and just put themselves and have no idea. And so I think it was probably a really good, probably a learning, a good learning experience for them and, and it being exposed at how maybe unhealthy many people are about nudity and how, how so many people, you know, really don't take it in stride and really, you know, it's, it's just, they can't get past the body from a sexual point of view. When I went to Rock Lodge, I was going to paint a, uh, like a whole group of people there. So I was excited about that. And then uh, I said, I said to Felicity, I said, you know, just to let you know, I'm not a, um, <clears throat> I'm not a, I'm not a nudist. Mm -hmm. And she responded, you know, she said, I don't know if you know how ironic that sounds. That's what she <laughs> said. And I felt like, you know, with everything that the nudists have given, and when I say given, I don't really mean like given to me, but like given of themselves, you know, when they did the public painting, I, I really, and, and it really was a lot of respect that I, I felt like I really wanted to, you know, respect their lifestyle, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I felt like I wanted to participate, you know, in it. And, and what I mean is, is that so like the whole, so I'm sitting, I'm walking around, I just have nothing but my shorts on. And I, I'm like, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm not even really that, I don't really want to, I'd rather have a shirt on, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm working, you know, but I don't know. So I'm, I'm, and everybody's naked, you know, and I'm obviously, I don't know if it's obvious, but I mean, I'm comfortable with everybody being naked. It doesn't bother me. I mean, I, I, it's, you know, whatever it's, I guess it's cool, but then, you know, I, I about to like start giving everyone directions. And it was like, so funny to me. Cause I, I like pull my pants down and then I'm like, everybody come over here, listen up. This is what we're going to be doing here. And it's sort of like, it just seems sort of like weird that like I'm pulling my pants down to say <laughs> that. And then I started painting. I don't know, I was painting for a little while and I, I didn't feel not naked. I felt naked and I felt like, I just felt like it was, I'm, I'm like bending over and I'm feeling like a little breeze and I don't know, <laughs> did it nude for about five, 10 minutes. And then I put my shorts back on. And uh, people said to me, some people afterwards, they were like, something like they appreciated the fact that I, you know, that I took it off in the first place. Mm -hmm. Did it change the dynamic for you? For I mean, while you were painting? Or was it just sort of a, a personal thing? Just feeling a little bit awkward? I mean, obviously, that was your first time. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it just felt a little like, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I felt a little... Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel a little, I don't want to, I, I just, I'll just say that I, I, I felt a breeze that I'm not used to. <laughs> a little vulnerable. I felt a little vulnerable. I did. And I, and I went, I, I did another painting, I guess the next year and the next summer I went and I, I did another one and I guess I was, I don't know, I don't want to say surprised, but I mean, maybe I made significant progress, I think is maybe the truth because then I was nude uh, for a much longer period of time. And then there was a certain point when I put my shorts on and then I actually felt more comfortable being nude than with the shorts on. I felt like, I don't know, it was like sort of, I don't know, I, that's how I felt. So then I took them right off and I don't know, I, I think that I have some, not severe, I, I don't think severe, but I have my own body issues and I guess maybe that's maybe everyone or most everyone or many people. And, and so I think it's been very, I think it's been very healthy for me to be a, a, a part of that side of it. I, I have to tell you, you know, as I said, like my, you know, my art always sort of keeps developing. And so I don't really like to predict where it's going to go next because, you know, I like letting it sort of make its own choices. Uh, but I, I can tell you the, the thought of actually getting painted in public is something that it's a little hard for me to imagine. And the fact that it's hard for me to imagine makes me feel like, well, that's maybe that's what I should be doing. <laughs> but I, I do think it's a little weird to be, I don't know, it, it seems really weird to be out in public painting yourself. Like that seems weird. And so, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't want to make any predictions where it's going to go, but the thought of being nude in public, I have kids and I think that that would be, that would be a thing for them because they weren't really, they were not raised nudist and, and we didn't raise them with, I don't, I think we raised them pretty open and, and not with a lot of shame, but 
their community, you know, the community that we're a part of. And I just think it's sort of like, it, it just seems like it's a, it's a whole process. And, um, and I think maybe that's, that's what's good about it is because it is a process. Well, and you've since uh, been fairly involved with YNA and, uh, and participating both, well, usually you're there uh, doing paintings, but you've also just uh, come to visit otherwise. I have, yeah, and, and I, I do, um, I do like the idea, but you know, I don't know. I, I guess I don't have a. <laughs> it's on a, that it's one. a process. Well, the one thing I wanted to go back to a little bit, uh, you mentioned the naturists or the nudist mo- uh, models coming in and uh, modeling for you in New York, which of course is a very different experience as you described. But there was one, one big painting that you did in particular that ended up on the Dave Letterman show that included, I know a few members from Rock Lodge and. Can you describe sort of what that was all about? I know that was that turned into a pretty big uh, opportunity for you for PR and that sort of thing. Well, I mean, you know, we on that day I painted. It was actually it was ten models. I don't know. I was feeling really good that day. I, I just I, I just some days the first brush stroke comes out and I'm I'm in a groove right away. And and it was ten models and everybody sort of helps and you know participates and I don't know. I mean, it was a large group and you know, we were David Letterman's top 10 list. And I guess, you know, like he's a TV guy. So he started trying to make it more like, you know, oh, just keep it in your living room, this kind of shtick. But, right. you know, I, I think it would have been maybe nicer for maybe some of the mainstream media to look at this thing and actually, you know, just be more appreciative of, of what we're doing and not just sort of take it for the the quick joke and just look at it for that that quick joke i i don't resent it but i i think that it's a little i i mean i'm fine and i and i appreciate the attention for sure but i also think that one of the struggles that i've had is that because people look at it in such a you know such a, a short a short attention span way that they just sort of have no choice the media is not presenting things in a sophisticated way so it's all it's just you know, they just sex. It's just it's right there. Right. right. Keep it in your keep it in your living room. You know, it's, that kind of thing. It's scintillating. It makes good morning news, right? <laughs> true. It's true. So talk to us a little bit about what's what's next. Do you have plans to continue forward in New York and and, and even beyond or what's the next steps? Well, you know, well a couple things. I mean, first of all, you know, a lot of people definitely have been contacting me and everybody, you know, a lot of people are ready for me to come back out and do it, which is nice and I think that, you know, it's hard not to just keep sort of coming out there and painting out there cuz it's really it feels like it's really impacting. There's a, a lot of other body painters that we've, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, other body painters. So we're looking this summer to possibly have uh, something called a a New York body painting weekend because a lot of the other body painters have talked to me and said that they would like to also experience the live body painting in Times Square. So we're sort of inviting a bunch of body painters, more of the well-known body painters throughout the country to come to New York to sort of share in the experience. And I think that when they share in the experience, I'm, I'm also very interested in not just sharing the fact that they're painting in public, but maybe sharing a little bit of the spontaneity, a little bit of the maybe the body acceptance, maybe, you know, instead of all the models being, you know, these perfect bodies that maybe they might be used to more often in the competitions, but like more of the, you know, maybe we get some naturists to be a part of it, that kind of thing. And uh, do you plan to take it beyond New York or mostly just in New York still? I don't know. I mean, New York is one of these places that really, I mean, I, I can't say that I won't go beyond New York, but I mean, the thing about New York, there's a couple of things about New York that are just really great. I mean, one of them is it, it's one of the few places that really has these uh, nudity laws. So, you know, you can really do these things. And, and it's also, there's people from all over the world that are there and they're watching. So to me, I think of myself as uh, more than anything as a like a street artist and as a public artist and and there's really I don't know the streets of New York seem to be pretty much as public as you can as you can get. Interesting. Before I forget, there's uh, one question I'm always fascinated in coming from a, a fashion background. But mm-hmm. in terms of the models, once they're painted, have you have you noticed that they feel clothed when they're painted? Is there a different uh, sense when they're uh, painted versus when they're 
um, you know, unpainted, fully nude, as it were. I'm just curious if you've noticed that. I would say the large majority of models, they feel very clothed at once they have the paint on them or once they're like uh, for the girls, like once their boobs are, are covered, then all of a sudden they're very comfortable. Uh, there have been some cases where models definitely don't feel that way. Most of the time when it's when when that's the case, there's been a couple of times where I've painted girls with really huge boobs, mm -hmm. giant boobs, and there's something about that where, and, I'm, and we would ask, you know, like, so do you think, uh, do, do you feel naked? And they, the girl would be like, yes. And there's something about the giant boobs that sparks a certain thing inside of some men that is just, I don't know, it's like a little bit of a, uh, just a very powerful hormonal charge is created that is just different than with girls with just average or even a little large boobs but you know those giant boobs just seem to like create like a almost an aggression in a sense i'm not sure about it but it's interesting that might that would be a whole other conversation <laughs> so if people I, can i just can i just throw in one thing you know i i just would like to throw in that um one of the the aspects of the painting and i think you you sort of covered it of course but is the whole idea of interacting uh, with people and in, and in a sense that like when, if someone gives me, let's say, uh, you know, paint this person and this person is 20 or paint this person and this person is 60, from my point of view, the process is the same. Even though the, the art is different and the person I'm painting is different and the experience is different, for me it's the same because I'm just sort of feeding off of whatever is in front of me. I, I, don't really, I don't really care what's in front of me. I just I'm sort of working with, with whatever it is and finding some kind of truth or connection there. And so one of the the projects that I've worked on, painting this one woman, her name is Freddie, and she uh, contacted me first when she had breast cancer, uh, had just didn't just get diagnosed with breast cancer, but had, you know, like stage four breast cancer and wanted to get painted. And it was a very intense experience. And I painted her three times. And the third time I painted her was in a, we were going to paint in front of the Museum of Modern Art. And then uh, she, she told me she's about to go through some treatments. And we were going to paint in front of the Museum of Modern Art. And we end up, uh, she was too sick to go outside and I ended up painting her in her hospital room. In, in what was really pretty close to one of her final days. So getting painted was like sort of this, it, it was like this significant experience for her. And, and I think that for me, the thing that's really unusual is that while that painting is so different than some of the other paintings, especially because some of the paintings I've done have been on very beautiful young girls, but to me, it's really all the same. And, and I think that if you can find a way to see the connection between those two things, then you, you know, there's something I think universal about the human experience. And you turn that uh, particular uh, piece into a video as well correct? Yeah. And I, I, I went through hours of footage and I, I got it down to eight minutes and refused to make it any shorter than that. And, and I, I'm very proud of it. And, uh, I, I think in some ways it, as I say, I mean, I, 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 in my heart, I don't think it's different than the other experiences. I don't think you need to be sick and dying to have a very powerful and meaningful and life expanding kind of experience. But I don't think that there's anything that I've done that's articulated the process of how it's really about, um, you know, w one of the ironies of the painting is that you're painting the body, the unclothed body, and yet the the painting really connects with the person's soul more than it does the body, that somehow the nudity sort of frees the person up, there's nowhere to hide, and so then there's nothing but who they are. The, you know, we're not the demographics of, of how we choose to present ourselves because, there, those things are all stripped away. It's really, I, I'm, it's really cool, but you know that. <laughs> well, I think that's that's well said and, and and a good place to end. Where where can people find more information about you, Andy? Well, my website. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm you know I should be all over the place on mostly Facebook, but uh, Twitter and and the like. And uh, and my my website is andygolub dot com, and it's you know it's coming out very soon a new website where 
people will have an opportunity to um, share their own feelings or their own experiences or their own opinions about what I'm doing and maybe share their own feelings about either the art or the nudity or, or you know, whatever, and, you know, have a little bit of a, a dialogue about it, you know, in, in, you know, through the, the, the web. That sounds great. Thank you so much for uh, being with us today. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Joshua, for uh, doing all this work, for uh, arranging the interview, recording it, and even editing it. And uh, thank you, Andy, for being part of the show and participating. I did not get to speak to you directly, but it was a very interesting discussion. And uh, I very much appreciate it. And that will be all for this episode of The Naturist Living Show. Thank you, as always, for listening. Again, my name is Stéphane Deschain. I'm the host for this podcast. The host, but uh, with a lot of help from Joshua, as you heard this time. And I'm also the owner of Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. Again, keep sending your comments and suggestions. Let's try to get more of those uh, audio comments like we did in the last show. Uh, you can call in. Uh, country code 1, area code 905-473-6060. That gets you on the main line for Bear Oaks Family Nature's Park. And then just dial extension 333 and a computer will take you to the box where you can leave your comment. And you can re-record and you can erase and you can restart as many times as you want. You can do it through Skype as well. Skype at Bear Oaks, B-A-R-E-O-A-K-S, one word. And again, that puts you in the phone line and you just dial extension 333 in the phone system. You can also send me emails. The show's email address is naturistliving, one word, at Bear Oaks, one word, B-A-R-E, of course, dot C-A. And you can find links to uh, all of the things that were referenced in the show, the survey, and all that at the uh, show's website, which is at naturistliving, one word, dot Bear Oaks, again, B-A-R-E, we are bear, Bear Oaks, dot C-A, because we're in Canada. Join us again in about a month for the next episode of The Naturist Living Show. This episode of The Naturist Living Show was brought to you by Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park. Traditional naturist values in a modern setting. Traditional values means that naturism is more than just taking your clothes off. It is a life philosophy with physical, psychological, environmental, social and moral benefits. Bear Oaks Family Naturist Park strives to promote those naturist values in a modern setting that provides the amenities and services that our members and visitors expect. Free your body, free your mind. Learn more at www.bearoaks.ca. We hope you enjoyed this video. As we said at the beginning, podcasts are much more convenient when you subscribe and listen on a podcast app. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Stitcher, Deezer, Overcast, and many, many other places. Please visit naturistlivingshow.com for more information on how to subscribe.